share my screen. I think we have that now. I'll go ahead and optimize for a video. All right. So in the schedule, we're doing lab zero zero, which is over lab safety. And you will be finishing the worksheet lab zero zero. And this worksheet is due uh, Friday at 8 a.m. So try and get it in by Friday at 8 a.m. If you do not, you will be dropped from the class. So those of you who are, are listening to this on YouTube, it's really important that you get lab zero zero in on Friday, January 7th at 8 a.m. And on Friday, I'll look at that. I'm gonna be traveling on Friday. Uh, and before five, I need to submit a list to the registration office for students who signed up for the class but are not attending. And what I'll do is I'll look at lab zero zero. And if it isn't turned in, you'll be dropped from the class. Normally I don't have a problem and students don't have trouble with this, but last term a student wasn't paying attention or maybe he didn't think I actually would drop him but I did drop him because he never submitted lab zero zero. And then he didn't get back to me for like a week later asking to add the class. And I said, no, you missed too much of the class. I'm not gonna add you. I will allow a student to add if they request it within the first week. But after the first week, I don't uh, uh, allow students to add because you've missed too much. We've already missed the first week, which is one tenth of the class this term. Any question about any of that? On Thursday, we'll be having lab zero one, ubiquity of microorganisms. Any question about any of that? Uh, let me talk just a little bit about the syllabus or what pertains to the lab. Um, can I say something really quick? Yes. So we're making a group chat kind of thing in the chat. So if anyone wants to add their numbers or emails that way, if you want to make a group um, for the class, we're able to. Okay, you can work together on the lab if that's what you're doing. <clears throat> for the extra credit assignment, which you don't even know about it yet, you cannot work on a current lab or getting the extra credit, which is set up for a study. I'll call it the extra credit study assignment. And I'll talk more about that next week. But you may work together on the lab. Just make sure you don't use somebody else's answer. If you do, you have to put it in quotes and say who it came from. Um, I'm not going to talk about the grading because I already talked about that. Uh, you do need to use a microscope even in the virtual lab. So you will need to know how to use a virtual microscope, but we will not be handling real microscopes. You don't have to worry about being exposed to microorganisms and becoming sick. You should know that the microorganisms we use in microbiology are biosafety level one. They're the lowest risk organisms. And these you can work with without a mask, without gloves, um, while safety level two, you should be careful with working with those. We don't have those in the microbiology lab, but, but uh, um, you can work with those without gloves, but you have to wash the place afterwards. And it's a good idea to do that 
even after uh, biosafety level one. So follow the lab safety and rules. I'm gonna ask you to read about it. There will be some questions on your first quiz over lab safety. Don't take shortcuts. The procedure has been set up to assure both your safety and everyone else who comes in the lab, their safety. Uh, let me mention with the lab, if you were to come into Clark College and go into an actual lab, uh, personal items are not allowed into the lab. You can bring them into the lab room and put them in the cubby hole. And that portion of the lab, meaning the door and the cubby hole, is considered outside of the lab. And you should put your purse in there and your backpack and your coat and any personal items. Okay, so that's considered out of the lab. Then once you work, walk into the lab proper, none of that stuff can come into the lab. And the reason is, is that we don't want you getting handling microorganisms and then handling your backpack and then taking the microorganisms home with you. Uh, that actually happened in Clark College over 10 years ago now, where somebody took home a microorganism and then, I don't know, cooked for their significant other, and that significant other came sick with uh, salmonella, which was handled in the microbiology lab. So generally anything that's brought into the lab has to stay in the lab until it has been decontaminated. And that means it'll be put in an autoclave. That's like a giant pressure cooker or put in bleach. And if you take your phone, for example, in the lab, it will be confiscated and then sterilized, probably put in the autoclave, which would melt it before you would get it back. Uh, very seldom do people took, take something into the lab and uh, it would be autoclaved and then returned to the students. But occasionally students will do that with something like a pencil or their notes or their lab coat at the very end of the term. It would be autoclaved and then returned to the student. Uh, generally, anything that's brought into the lab has to stay in the lab. And so you don't bring in your personal items to the lab. If, if you have personal items, like I said, they should be considered kept in the cubby hole and that is considered outside of the lab. You should realize that all cultures you'd be working with are potentially pathogenic. And so they should be handled appropriately. Uh, for the lab, it's required that when you come into the lab, and you'll be quizzed on this, so I'm going to go over it. You come into the lab, you put away your backpack and the cubby hole and your coat and your purse and whatever, and then you go wash your hands. Then you put on your lab coat, then you put on gloves, and if you're working with a splash hazard, you'd also be putting on goggles, and that's to protect you. And then you go work with the microorganisms. When, when before you start, you wipe down the lab bench, disinfect it, and usually you do that at the very start of the lab. And then when you are ready to leave, you wipe down the lab bench area with disinfectant. And then you take off your lab coat, take off your gloves, then go wash your hands and then grab whatever you have in the cubby hole, and then you leave. And so those are the procedures for entering the lab and for leaving the lab. Any questions about any of that? I'll let you read about accidents in the lab. And all the other procedures. I'm thinking, is there anything really important here? Everything that you use in the lab is generally supplied to you, like 
paper and pencils and a notebook and all the organisms and the cultures and the solutions you'll be working with. So you don't really need to bring in anything. Uh, when you're done with the culture, it should be put in the um, autoclave bag, and that's called a different name, what is that also called, the biohazard bag. And then it'll be autoclave before it's put into the trash. Don't put your microorganisms in the trash can. For something like paper waste, like what you clean the, the laptop, the, not the laptop, the, the bench top with, uh, that, if it doesn't have microorganisms in it, can go in the trash can, okay? And that will not be autoclave. So if it has microorganisms in it, like you have a spill, a liquid spill that has microorganisms in it, and you wipe it up with paper towel and disinfectant, that should go in the autoclave bag, the, the biohazard bag. For test tubes and things that are glass, you put them on the counter in uh, the front of the lab where there's a, a, a bin to put them or a basket to put them. Glass is never put in the autoclave bag. For your cultures, they're usually in, in uh, plastic containers like a Petri dish, and that can go in the autoclave bag. Any questions about any of that? All right, so read the laboratory safety. You will be uh, uh, quizzed on this, and you really should know how to use, follow laboratory safety because you're taking microbiology once you leave and then work in a health care facility. You should be following microbiology lab safety rules, so you should read through these. Any questions about any of that? All right, if not, that's the syllabus. We will be discussing lab zero zero. And then you'll do lab zero zero. All right, so in the, let's see if I can get that. In the lab website for lab one, we want to do module zero, 00 and I'll walk you through it. And then when you write up your answers, you will write them up in the worksheet lab zero, 00. Only submit the worksheet, do not submit the lab module. It is much, much bigger and it takes up much more room on my Canvas web page. Any questions about that part? Oh, that's the worksheet. So lab module zero, 00 is on laboratory safety. You're not going to be working in the lab, but you know, do need to know this material. As many of these rules will be relevant, obviously for the quiz, but also for your career. The learning objectives. Oh, I don't have my notes in here. Uh, Distinguish between safe and unsafe laboratory practices. Understand where this relevant safety equipment is located in the lab. And that is like the fire extinguisher, things like that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Understand how safety, how to safety dispose of contaminated materials. So you're expected to follow a number of safety rules, including wear proper attire which includes a Clark, you come into the lab, you put on a clean lab coat and you either buy one or we will give you one and then you'll reuse that for the rest of the term. And then when you have the lab coat on, you put on disposable gloves. You should be wearing closed toed shoes. If women have fancy shoes or men or women have uh, sandals, those are not allowed because if you spill something, it can fall down a liquid culture or even a solid culture, and then the microorganisms could get on your feet. We don't want that 
So it's required that you have closed toed shoes. And in microbiology, we're much more concerned about a spill of a microorganism than we are working with a spill of a, a chemical hazard. In microbiology, we don't really work very often with chemical hazards. If you're working with a splash hazard, meaning you might splash microorganism into your eye, you must wear goggles. And we do have goggles that have been UV and they can fit over your own eyeglasses. And then all of this, these equipment that you're wearing must be taken off, the safety equipment must be taken off before you leave the lab. Obviously not your own shoes, you provide that. Long hair should be tied back while you're in the microbiology lab so it doesn't call, catch on fire. There's to be no food or drinking in the lab, no use of electronics like your phone or personal computer. Uh, if you were to use that and actually do that in a real lab, it would be confiscated from you and it would be sterilized, which would destroy it. So no personal items are to be brought into the main part of the lab. Obviously, if you have personal items, they go in the cubby hole and that's considered outside of the lab. So I'm showing you a picture of what you would look like if you were to come into the lab. And as I stated earlier, you always disinfect your lab bench before you start working. And that's actually our lab. And uh, when you're done, before you leave, you disinfect the workbench and you disinfect with the disinfectant. Discard waste in the appropriate place. If it doesn't have um, contaminants in it, it goes in the garbage, the garbage can, which isn't shown here. But if it does have bacteria contaminants, it goes in the biohazard bag, also called the autoclave bag, because it would be autoclave. Uh, you never put glass in here, but you can put paper or plastic, stuff like that. And that inclu includes petri dishes when you're done with them. Uh, we very, very seldom use sharp, but we do have a sharps container like for putting razor blades, and that goes in a sharp container. I don't have a picture of that. Uh, slides and cover slips go in sp specific containers that have disinfectant in them, and that's not shown, and they would be uh, on the front counter of the lab. Let's see. We very seldom use glassware. Occasionally we use glass test tubes. Those also go in a bucket or a, a rack in a bucket in the front of the lab. Uh, no glass should ever go in the biohazard container. If you have an accident and you break something that's glass uh, and it's contaminated, you must first report the spill and accident immediately and then cover it up with the disinfectant and put paper on top so the disinfectant is wicked through the culture and then let it sit for about 15 minutes. That's for the disinfectant to kill the bacteria and then take the paper and put it in the biohazard bag and then carefully pick up the glass and put that in the uh, broken glass container, and that's just a container on the side of the lab. I don't think we have it shown there. And, uh, and then clean up your spill with, with the paper. And take the paper and put it in the biohazard bag because you have a spill here. Any question about any of that? All right. Uh, generally for uh, lids and petri dishes, you want to keep things covered when they're not used, and that will reduce the risk of contamination coming into them. Never mouth pipette. When you're in the lab, don't 
chew on your fingernails or a pencil. Don't take anything into your mouth when you're in the lab. And that's to reduce contamination. We don't use a flame, we use a BATCO incinerator. And what you do is you put either a loop or a wire needle inside the BATCO incinerator until it gets red hot. You can see the stone right here on the inside is red hot. And when it's red hot, you can bring it out. Uh, usually you need to put it in something like 10 seconds to 20 seconds before it turns red hot. And it depends how hot your stone is. You should be familiar with this laboratory safety equipment. A shower in case you were to spill something caustic all over you. I've never had a student needing to do that. I wash station. We have a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket. The fire blanket's not shown. And most of these things are kept in the same place. That looks like the spill control station. Or oh, a fire alarm in case there's a fire. All right, so read the, read the relevant lab generally before class, although because it's an online class, uh, you can read it during the lab. So there's no real rush because you can always do it online. I will be here until, I think I'm gonna leave a little early at 7.30 today because I need to, to go somewhere tonight. And uh, uh, hopefully you guys will have questions at 7.30. I'll ask if there's any questions. Uh, but uh, I'll be finished here and you'll start on the lab in just a little bit. All right, so read about the laboratory procedures and the safety rules. I've already discussed them, the syllabus. Let me make sure. We talked about that. Uh, the cell phone of yours can be put in your backpack in the cubby hole, but to use the phone while you're in the lab, you'd have to first take off your gloves, take off your lab coat, wash your hands, grab your phone, go outside of the lab, make the phone call, come back into the lab, put away the phone, wash your hands, put on your lab coat, and then uh, uh, put on your gloves. So generally, you don't want to use a phone while you're in the lab. OK, I already mentioned that. The prohibited items in the lab will be confiscated. I'm going to skip over that because I already talked about it. I already talked about that. Talked about that. Cleanliness is a virtue in microbiology. That's why you wash the counter beforehand to make sure that there aren't microorganisms there which can contaminate your culture, as well as you don't want to trust whoever was at your lab bench before you. And then you wash it before you go. We're going to talk about that. Okay, never take cultures out of the lab. I would probably kick you out of microbiology if you were to do that. If you have a cut or sore on your hand, you should wash your hands, apply a Band-Aid, they are available in the microbiology lab, and then put on the glove. All microbiology cultures must be appropriately labeled with your name, the date, the nature of the specimen, like if it's E. coli, write E. coli, and then the medium used. You may put optionally the temperature that you're growing the microorganisms at. But that one is optional. But all cultures should be labeled with your name, the date, the nature of the specimen, and the medium. All right, I think I've talked about this. Auger plates are put in the uh, biohazard waste bin the biohazard bag, the glass slides and cotton swabs are put in a glass container containing disinfectant. And we had one for slides 
and one for the uh, cover slip. Con swabs, we've got many of them. And there's one by the uh, front counter where you're putting the slides and the, the cover slips. And then there's one uh, on each lab bench. We really don't use pipettes, but if we do use pipettes, uh, they should be put in their appropriately labeled bin where it says pipettes. And then glass tubes, the test tubes you're using, you should take the tape off and uh, then put them in uh, the, uh, the uh, container where we put test tubes and those will be autoclaved before they are washed and then they will be rinsed and then re dried and then reused. So we autoclave everything that has microorganisms in it. Any question about any of that? All right, I think that's it for lab zero zero. So start working on worksheet zero zero. And here it is here. Um, these do not show unless you print it out. So I'm gonna tell you to skip those questions and go to the second page, ignore the above, that means skip the, the first page and then answer rule one in the lab. What do you always wear for safety before you enter the lab? So don't put on lab coat and gloves because those you do not put on before you enter the lab. One thing that is mentioned is you have closed toed shoes, okay? And there's other things you should have on like gloves, all right? Uh, use your imagination to answer that because we only talk about closed toed shoes. Uh, but there's four things that you should answer here and there's an asterisk for each answer. After you enter the lab, what do you put on to keep yourself safe in the lab? Here you should put on the lab coat and the gloves. Rule three, you have to look up online what is a safety data sheet and you use it for each chemical in the lab. And it, the lab safety data sheet describes what? And you have to put in one, two, three, four, five different things. Like I said, you have to go online and find out what that is. Rule four, know the location of your safety equipment, such as what? And you need to go one, two, three, four, five pieces of safety equipment. And that's stuff that's in the lab. And we did talk about that. And then what can you take into the lab? And what can you eat and drink in the lab? The other question is, what can, what can you eat and drink in the lab? Okay, and there should be three answers here. And then less one item of laboratory tire you must wear in the microbiology lab, and less one item that is allowed in the microbiology lab. And something that is allowed, people say nothing, that's not quite true. Like you can bring in your lab glasses in the lab, meaning if I've got glasses on, you can bring those in the lab. I shouldn't touch them while I'm in the lab, but you can bring them into the lab. You can bring in your watch and you should put the glove over your watch, assuming they're wearing it on your wrist. And then less one item that's not allowed in the microbiology lab. And there's many that you could list there. Submit this by 8 a.m. Friday of week one, or you will be dropped from the class. I'm gonna use this lab to find out who is attending the class. And if you're not attending, I'm dropping you from the class. Any questions? All right, I'll be here until 7.30 to answer any questions. Get started on the lab worksheet. Sorry. Do you have any like YouTube channels you would recommend us to watch? I, I kind of like watching Ninja Nerd. Uh, 
if there is a good YouTube site, I will list it during the lesson, okay? And I don't think there were any for laboratory safety. Let me check. Oh, I should just open it separately. I'm looking to see under the uh, references. Yeah, there are no references for this one. So there are no links for this one, sorry. But, uh, Generally, if there is a YouTube site that's very applicable, I'll put it on my web page. And sometimes I'll show it in the class. All right, I'm going to put the uh, lecture site on my YouTube website right now. All right, I just uploaded the lecture, uh, lecture Zoom site. Uh, it's gonna be a while before it, it's available, but, but it, it is uploaded now.
Does anyone know if all of the labs for microbiology are online or if there's another class that have like on-campus labs? Uh, I do. And uh, they were going to have uh, some microbiology labs on campus this term, but uh, both of the professors who were teaching microbiology decided to scrub that with uh, all the rules and uh, uh, Omicron spreading. So there are no microbiology labs on campus this term. They're all online. Okay, thank you. I have a question. So for rule number three, what are the asterisks wanting? What are you wanting us to put there? There, now I can talk. Um, rule three, reopen it. Yes. It's the safety data sheet question. Uh, you're supposed to say what it is, I think. Okay. What the safety data sheet is. And uh, okay, each chemical in the lab must have a safety data sheet. And what does the safety data sheet describe? Okay, thank you. Okay.
I have a question. Okay. So the asterisks are not how many answers need to be, like for example, in rule three, you don't need to put one answer for each asterisk. Uh, you need one answer for each asterisk. Okay. For rule four, do you just want us to list the safety equipment? Yes, just name them. I'm not asking you where they're located in the lab because obviously you're not in the lab and you won't see where they're located. But just list what, what we mean by the safety equipment.
Hello. Yeah, I'm going to be leaving tonight, so don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Bye.